In 1947, the development of transistors, or electronic switches, marked the beginning of a digital revolution. This is the very first transistor. It was about the size of a golf ball, and the idea is that the flow of electric current between two terminals through a piece of semiconductor can be switched on and off by a third terminal in the base. They were invented originally to reroute phone calls through the telephone exchange system but we soon learned to use them to encode and process information, with the on and off states representing the binary zeros and ones that our modern digital world is now built upon. Now they're everywhere, and they've been getting smaller, to the point where today we pack a billion of them into every single new smartphone. My research looks ahead to the extreme limit of miniaturization, down to the scale of individual atoms. The flow of electric current through this atomic scale transistor depends on the configuration of one single electron orbiting just one single atom that I have put there in the circle to contain it. We're now encoding information on objects so small that they are inherently quantum mechanical, and that is a game changer. In particular, every electron has a quantum property called spin. You can think of it as an arrow that can point up or down or somewhere in between. Now, up and down correspond to the old on and off of a switch, the zero and one. But these other directions, left, right, front and back, and everything else in between, they have no equivalent in the transistors that we use today. It turns out that this new freedom can lead to fundamentally new and powerful ways of processing information. And this is what we call quantum computing. Algorithms that take advantage of these new directions can potentially solve problems that cannot be cracked by even the most powerful supercomputers today, running at full speed for hundreds of years. Things like predicting the behavior of stock markets or weather systems. Things like modeling new medicines and how proteins and cells will respond to them and things like optimizing global distribution networks, be it internet connectivity or electricity grids. I'm working towards having complete control over the spin orientation of this individual isolated electron bound to that precision-placed atom to point it any direction that I choose, which would make this atomic transistor the first new building block in a new powerful type of quantum computer. Thank you.